Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Crystal Healing. I am your host, Crystal Heal. On today's audio, um, I want to talk to you about the mystic meaning of Kanye West's words that slavery uh, was or is a choice. Um, as a subtitle, I have uh, moving from pawn to power. Now, for those of you who uh, listen to my audios quite a bit, you know that lately I have been on the Trinity. Um, what I mean by the Trinity is that we know that we have two eyes in the front of our head, but we also have a hidden eye, the third eye. We have two um, governing bodies of light in the sky called the sun and the moon, but we also know we have a hidden one called Amun Ra, um, the black hole sun. Uh, the Trinity is in everything. But uh, as it relates to this God, yo, I want you to look at this picture I have placed before you. This picture comes from uh, a music video that Kanye West did called Power. If you don't quite remember that music video, I will give you a little snippet of what it sounds like. But it's very relevant. <laughs> I'm not going to play the whole song. I'm living in that 21st century. Doing something mean to it. Do it better than anybody you ever seen. Do it. Screams from the haters. Got a nice ring to it. I guess every superhero need his theme music. No one man. No one man should have all that power. So, back to the subject. We're going to be talking about moving from pawn to power. From pawn to to power. Now, I want you to understand that slavery, like Kanye said, is indeed a choice. And ignorance is no excuse. We, we are, to this very moment, for the most part, most of us are slaves right now. And we are indeed slaves by choice because of our ignorance. But again, ignorance of the law, ignorance of anything is no excuse, especially in the information age. Now, let's get down to the esoteric, mystic meaning of what Kanye said, because this picture I have before you is very relevant to the subject. If you look at the picture, you will see something here. You will see something along the lines of what I've been speaking for the last few weeks now, which is there's a trinity in all things. There's the positive and there's the negative. And then there is the sun or that which is the result of the positive and the negative coming together. As you know, in electricity, positive and negative creates light. As you know, in biology, a male and a female creates a child. So it is clear that positive and negative come together to create something new, something different. And in this picture, you see Kanye has a man on one side, a female on another side, but he is representing the light. He is representing the purple. When you join the blue and the red together, you get the purple. This is why the royals wore purple, because it symbolizes power. Now, how is slavery a choice? I want you to understand that there are, there are for the majority of people, two motivating factors in their life. Only two. There's only two reasons for the most part for most people, of why we do anything at all, why we get up, why we go to work, why we do anything whatsoever. So the question here is, who is your God? And those two are pleasure and pain. Everything that we do is either to obtain pleasure or to avoid pain. Now, Understand that if you are operating in order to avoid pain, then pain is your God. Wherever pain is located, you go the other way. Hmm? If you are motivated by pleasure, if you go wherever the pleasure is located, then I want you to know that pleasure is your God. Pleasure determines your coming and going. But that means if either you're motivated by the avoidance of pain or the attainment of pleasure, then you are a slave 
to an external influence. I'm going to say that again. If you are motivated by avoiding pain in your life, if everything you do is centered around minimizing the pain and death in your life, then your God is pain and you are a slave to that pain because your comings and goings are decided by whether pain and death and suffering are present or not. You are a slave. And in like manner, if you, peace Daryl, peace Jalen, peace everybody that tuned in, in like manner, if everything that you do is centered around obtaining some type of pleasure, obtaining some type of joy, then pleasure is your God. And you are still a slave. Now, if you are a slave to pleasure, your God is, is, is a much better God than pain. But you're still a slave which does not, which disqualifies you from being your own God. Now, what Kanye is trying to teach people is how to move from being a pawn to either pleasure or pain to being in power. Now, what does that mean? You see, pleasure and pain are like the two thieves that were hanging on the cross on the side of Jesus. It's like the two eyeballs on the outside of your head. It's like the sun and the moon. They're thieves. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? The true eye is the eye that's hidden within. The true son is the ah, moon, ra, the amen, the hidden one. Do you understand? And so the true God is not pleasure and it is not pain, but it is purpose. Ooh, it is purpose. Imagine a chessboard. You've heard them say, this ain't checkers, this is chess, right? This ain't checkers, this is chess. Imagine a chess board. You know on one side they got the white and on one side they got the black. I want you to understand that for the majority of your life you've been a pawn. You've been being played. See, wherever pleasure is at, that's where you go. And wherever pain is at, that's what you avoid. You are a slave to pleasure and to pain. You are a pawn on the board. You either on the black team or you on the white team. But understand, as long as you are slave to pleasure and pain, regardless, one is better than the other. Yes. In terms of, of, of what we like, we like pleasure. We don't like pain. But either way. You're still a slave and you're a slave by choice because you can always get out the game. Now, I want you to understand that this whole, whole visual manifestation, everything that you see is a game. It's just like a chessboard. This is why the Freemasons on their floor, you see they got the black and white checkered board because they understand that there's a duality here. They understand that this whole world is a chess board. And you see, EA Sports says it's time to get in the game. Now, see, EA, E equals energy and A equals action. Energy in action or energy in motion. Because, see, we're talking about your emotions. That's how they get you. You see, if, if, if they want you, if they want you to go in a certain direction, they dangle a carrot over there in that direction. And because you love pleasure, that's where you go. You see, that's how the government got you. They, they, they dangled food stamps and Social Security and 401k. Oh, and that's where you went. You understand? Now, if they can control you by dangling a carrot in front of you, then they crack that whip behind your ass. Cacao. And because you want to run from that pain, you go in the opposite direction. I want you to understand that Kanye West is trying to tell you something about the inner workings of this world. Uh, he wants you to understand that if they can't get you by attracting you with pleasure, they will deter you by pain. Now, see, everybody wants to escape the matrix. Everybody want to escape the control mechanism that has been set up around them. But I want you to know that if you want to get out the game, you better get in the game. What does that mean, Crystal? Get in the game. That means you are missing in action. That means pleasure and pain determine your every single move.
But you got to learn not to be a pawn to pleasure and pain. You have got to die to both. You see, some people die to the pleasures in their life. They 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 keep themselves from what is called pleasure. These are the people that you know as the hyper religious folk. You understand? They don't go chill with the family because they drinking over there. They're listening to secular music. You see, they they have learned to die to the pleasures of life. Oh, but not the pain, though, <laughs> not the pain. And then there are those people who've died to the pains of life. They have being the alchemists that they are. They have transmuted all of the pains into growth and expansion. And so they've died to the pains of life. The pain isn't pain anymore. And they're only alive to the pleasures. But either way, you're still a slave. You're still a slave, whether it's pain that determines your movements or whether it's pleasure that determines your movement. It is not purpose. Huh? And power is in the purpose. Like Kanye said in the song that this video, that this picture represents, no one man should have all that power is what they are telling you. That's what they're saying behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. So they crack that whip on your ass because they know you will avoid pain and death at all costs. So they put pain and death wherever they don't want you to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they know that you love the pleasures of life. So when they want you to take corridor C, they put some type of pleasure, food stamps, 401k, subsidies, housing, something that you want down corridor C. And you fall for it every fucking time. Yes, you do, because you're not living by purpose. Now, what does living by purpose mean, Crystal? Hmm? See, purple is not the left eye and it's not the right eye. <laughs> it's the one in the middle. It's the third eye, which is really the first eye, because everything was built on purpose. Hmm? Purpose is not the mother or the father, but purpose is the child. Purpose is not the thought or the emotions, but purpose is the action. And we got to move from being a pawn to pleasure and pain to being a pawn for purpose because purpose is what you are. And when you are a slave of yourself, you become the slave and the master. You are no longer master, nor are you a slave. We have to move from being a pawn on the black and white chessboard, the good and evil chessboard, the life and death chessboard. We got to move from duality. To unity. And this is why in this picture you see Kanye has strategically placed himself in the middle as Jesus or Jesus hmm? who hung between two thieves. That's right. Because the sun and the moon don't really manifest shit. It's the amen, the ah moon ra, the hidden one that does. Your two eyes in front of your head don't manifest shit. It's the one on the inside of your head that manifests. That's right. And we have to begin, we have to begin to live for purpose, irregardless of the pain or the pleasure that it entails. Now, we can learn a little bit of some about uh, 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 living on purpose by some of these stories that nobody likes to read, such as the Jesus story. You see what they said. Now, whether this story really happened or not is irrelevant. Just like just like the three little pigs and and every other story, you know, you can gain some wisdom for it. So whether you think it happened or not is irrelevant. Just pull the juice out of the story. Understand that when Jesus so-called went to the cross, he didn't go to the cross to obtain pleasure for himself. There was no pleasure in the cross, according to the story for Jesus. He did not go to the cross to avoid pain either. Because as you as you, as the story goes, it was a really painful experience. So he didn't go for pleasure and he didn't go for pain. Well, why? Oh, why did he go? <laughs> oh, it's so good. He went <laughs> because of purpose. <laughs> he went because of purpose. And you see, purpose is where the power is at, because when you move according to purpose, you move according to your true will. 
You're like a tree planted by the water. That is when you can be said to be free because you are moving according to your will, regardless of the pain that it entails and irregardless of the pleasure that it may entail. You could care less about the pleasure or the pain because you're moving by the purpose. And there's power in that. Now, you may think, well, this is the, like, like old Vance said on, on the interview. Well, this is the reality that I was given. Yeah, did y'all see Kanye in face when he said that about the reality that he was given? He wanted to stop him right there and say something. And that is because you was given a reality. Yes, you was. And it's on a black and white chessboard. And you're a pawn. Yeah, you on the board. But you're not in the game. What does that mean? That means you're on the board and you're being played. Either with a stimulus, a carrot of pleasure or a whip of pain. You're being played. You're on the board. You're in the reality. But EA says you got to get in the game. What does that mean? That means you got to live according to purpose, according to your will, regardless of the pleasure or the pain that is in there. And by and, and then and only then can you have said to be free. See, you continue to be led by pleasure and by pain and you are doing it by choice. Yes, you are. You are doing it by choice choice because there's also a third choice there and ignorance of the third choice is no excuse just like ignorance of the black hole sun the one that manifests the one that we close our eyes and we give it our request and we say its name after the prayer we say amen ignorance that of its presence is no excuse just like we supposedly see out of the two eyes in the front of our head, but it's the one on the inside, the first eye that they call the third eye, which is the eye of faith, the eye of vision, the eye of manifestation. Ignorance of that eye is no excuse. And so in like manner, you know about pleasure, you know about pain and ignorance of your purpose is no excuse. If you don't know your purpose, if you don't have a purpose, then I suggest you stop whatever it is that you are doing and you get you some. Mm -hmm. You ever heard the saying, get your life? Hmm. Yeah, get your life because your purpose is your life. And if you have no purpose to direct your life, then you're being directed by either pleasure or pain or both, and you are a fucking slave, like Cayenne said, and you're one by choice. By choice. You are choosing to be led by pleasure and pain. There's always a choice. We might not like the options, but the choice is still there for you. What do you mean by that, Crystal? You see, since we're on the subject of slavery, we can talk about that one. See, there was a choice. Just like Killmonger said at the end of Black Panther, fuck it, throw me over the ship like they did my ancestors because I'd rather die than be a slave. You see, death is the great equalizer. That's the choice. You, they can never take that choice away from you. You understand? So there's always a choice here. Now, you could always die. Am I promoting suicide? Is Crystal promoting suicide right now? No, I'm not. I'm promoting something totally different. I'm promoting uniting the sides, not suing a side. I'm promoting uniting a side and thereby dissolving what we call the ego. You see, there's something in the scripture that's called dying to something. They say you need to die to sin. You need to die to the Old Testament. He died to the law. You hear those types of things. But what does that mean? That means you can still be alive, but yet be dead to something. You know, we do that in relationships. You could be in a relationship with someone, in the same house with someone, but one day, someday you die to them. What does that mean? What they say about you don't even fucking matter no more. Why? Because you're dead to them. Hmm? 
The opinions don't matter. You're dead to that. It, that means it doesn't affect you in any kind of way. When they say something about you, it's just like you're dead because you don't hear that shit. Hmm? You're not affected by it anymore. And in the same way, if I dangle a carrot over a dead man, a dead man's head, he's not going to run after the goddamn carrot. And if I crack a whip on his ass, he's not going to run from the crack of the whip neither. Why? Why? Because he's dead. <laughs> and a dead man don't feel none of that. And I'm telling y'all, y'all need to die to the pain in your life and also die to its pleasures. See, this is what the what the Buddhists and the monks and all of these people who've been practicing spirituality for eons have been trying to tell you. They call it non-attachment. Mm -hmm. Now, we've taken this non-attachment document, uh, uh, doctrine, and we, we've said detach from your kids, detach from your family. I mean, we've perverted it, of course, as we do all things, but... The, the doctrine of non-attachment means that as long as you're attached to the joys of this life, and as long as you are running from the pains of this life, then you are in slavery. As long as you fear death, you are in slavery because at any point in time, anybody can, can come and threaten you with death and you will immediately become a slave to avoid that death. But when you no longer fear death, then you can no longer be subjected and made a slave. Because death is always an option you are willing to take. Hmm? But we don't truly understand death. See, you could die while you're still alive. Matter of fact, even more than you can die while you're still alive, I implore you to die before you die. I'm going to say that again because that was a little deep. I implore you to die before you die. Why would you say that, Crystal? Because he who has experienced the first death will not be hurt by the second death. Mm. Ooh, that's some deep shit. Like Silas the Wise says, that's deep. You got to grasp. He who has experienced the first death will not be hurt by the second death. So I implore you to die before you die. He who seeks to save his life will lose it. But he who loses his life, a.k.a. die for my sake, will find it. Hmm? You got to die before you die. That don't mean go out and kill yourself, take a bunch of pills, shoot yourself in the head. That's not what I'm talking about. This is mystic talk. And if you don't understand mystic talk, then I don't know how you stumbled in on this God of yo. Have a nice day. I'm talking to my mystics here. You got to die for you die. That means in the same way you're in a relationship with somebody and someday, one day you wake up and everything they say don't matter to you no more. Anything they do don't matter to you no more. How did that happen? I'm going to tell you how. Because you died to them. You have died. And I'm going to say this at this, at this juncture too. When you're in a marriage, a so-called marriage with people, when you say till death do us part, I'm telling you right now that them fucking pieces of paper don't mean nothing. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Whenever you die to that man or that woman, meaning that they, their opinions no longer matter for you anymore, how they feel or think about you no longer matters to you anymore, you have died to that person. Y'all are no longer fucking married. I don't care what that piece of paper says do you understand what i'm telling you in god's eyes in the universe eyes in the most high's eyes you are no longer married married is union till death do you part not till the paperwork come in till you die to them and that simply means that they no longer factor in your world their words and their deeds no longer create any type of movement inside of you and in the same way, people, we need to die to the world is what the scriptures say. And though y'all want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, hey, whatever works for you. But I'm talking to my mystics, those people who can pull honey out the rock, those people who can get good information and truth out of the dirt 
and the lies that it has been covered around. That's right. Those who know how to dig for gold. Those who don't mind getting their hands a little dirty with some lies and misinformation in order to get the diamond that's buried deep inside. That's who the fuck I'm talking to today. And so... Yeah, Reg, I, I, I cuss a lot. I do that for a reason, though, Reg. That's my cousin, Reg. Peace, Reg. I do that for a reason, Reg. Because, see, I, I don't do hyper-religious folks. I don't do them kind of folks, Reg. I, 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 I mean, I do, but I don't. And, see, when hyper-religious folks get on my shit, they hurry up and click off because I cuss. You understand? And then they say, oh, my God, it's blasphemous. She cussing and talking about the scripture at the same time. But you can't put God in the box. And I know who I am. But see, I cuss like that because all the diamonds are buried in dirt. And if you ain't willing to go through the dirt to get to the diamond, then you don't deserve it. And so, oh, my God, I put a lot of dirt in there. So that those folks who don't want to get their hands dirty, they hurry up and click off before they get to the diamond. Because what I got to say isn't for those judgmental, hyper-religious folks. No, it's for the balanced people. Those who are just and balanced. Never mind. Back to the subject at hand. So, let's dig through some of this dirt and get to it. You got to die before you die. You got to die to the world. What is the world? The world is full of pleasure and pain. It is a chessboard, black and white. Some things give you pleasure. Some things give you pain. But you got to die to all of those things. You see, whether it gives you pleasure or pain should matter you should matter not to you. The only thing should matter to you is does it feed your purpose? Now, some things feed your purpose, but there will be pain involved. Don't mind that pain. Die to that pain. Hmm? Some things that feed your purpose offer you pleasure. That shouldn't matter to you neither. The only thing that should matter to you is feeding your purpose. Feeding your power. Feeding your light. Hmm? You need to die to anything that does not serve your purpose, even if it hurts. That's right. I said, even if it hurts, even if it causes you pain. You see, that's what Kanye was trying to say, that the, our ancestors, so-called ancestors, who is us, <coughs> chose, they chose the pleasure of living over the pain of death. Mm -hmm. Even though that living would be a painful state. How many of you know that there are some existences worse or worse than dying? There are some things that are simply worse than dying. Death is not the worst fate that can happen to a man. <coughs> now, our so-called ancestors made the choice. To, to deal with the pain of slavery in order to enjoy the pleasure of living. Hmm? Not realizing that there was a third choice, that there is purpose. They didn't endure slavery for purpose because if they endured slavery for purpose, then they, then they would have handed that purpose down to us by word of mouth. But did you hear of any purpose? I didn't hear of none. I didn't hear of none. The only purpose was to continue to survive. And, 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 and don't get it twisted, folks. Don't get it twisted. I love my ancestors because I love myself. And I know that I am them. I am the all. You understand? But what I am trying to, 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 to elucidate to you is that you're in slavery now for the most part. Some people have gotten free. This is what Kanye talked about, that free thought shit. You heard him say that quite a bit in the interview about free thinking. He gave the, the analogy about the coffee table and how because we've been taught that the coffee table is for coffee. And this is with everything in your life. You've been taught what everything is, so you're no longer asking. Hmm? You do whatever society says looks good. And you will not do anything outside of what society says look good because you don't want to incur that pain. Even some of the things that I speak about in my God, you understand, for the vast majority of folks is blasphemy. 
And see, people will think like I think, but they won't say what I say because they are afraid of the pain that they will have to endure from society. So you're not free in your thoughts. Hmm? But we got to move from a place of being in control, of being controlled by what society think, how we should behave, of what society says is right, of the pain of society not agreeing with us, the pain of society or our family shunning us. We also have to move from saying and doing shit to, to obtain the pleasure of being accepted by folks. That's right. I'm going to say it again. We have to refrain from saying and doing shit because we are after the pleasure of being respected or we are after the pleasure of being uh, accepted. This is what's wrong with Facebook and shit like that. Now, these people doing dumb ass shit for likes and hearts. And it's that pleasure principle. You all are on Facebook twerking your ass and doing everything under the sun because you want likes and hearts. Hmm. Either that or you're not saying what you should be saying because you don't want the penalty. You don't want the pain. You'll be watching videos like this one. You know, half of the people who watch my videos don't even click like. Hmm? Now, granted, I don't know how many people watch them because I do audio. You can't tell. I don't really care. I put it out there. But the point is, is that a lot of people will watch shit like what I talk about and never hit the like button because they don't want to. They don't want nobody to see their name subscribing to this type of thinking because there's some type of backlash behind that. You understand? So though their heart likes the shit, they can't like it publicly because what do my friends think? I don't want nobody to see my 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 heart, my like under that shit because they're going to think I'm. They're going to think I'm crazy. They're going to think I think like that. And I, I don't really want that. So do you see how you're being controlled by the pleasure of acceptance? Hmm? The pleasure of being liked. Or you're being controlled by the pain of being rejected. Hmm? The pain of being classified as crazy. The pain of being classified as unorthodox. The pain of being classified as a devil or a demon or blasphemous or any of those other negative words that have been used as whips and chains around our fucking neck. See, when you truly free, they could say whatever they want about you. See, you like Jesus. They could say, uh, uh, look at her. She, she's a demon. She's casting out demons with the demons. You can call me whatever you want, boo. You can call me whatever you want. And I wish above all things that everybody be like that. Because see, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being controlled by the pleasure of being accepted. I could care less whether you accept me or not. Real story. Real story. I could care less. Of whether you dislike me or not. You understand? Because I don't operate according to pleasure. Fuck being accepted. I don't operate according to pain. Fuck being rejected. I know rejection. I know rejection very well. And I know acceptance very well. Because I accept my fucking self. You understand? I operate according to purpose. And my purpose is to, is to enlighten or expand your awareness, your consciousness. That's my purpose. Whether you accept or reject is not my business. Let us learn not to be lustful after results. Plant your seed and keep it moving. Plant your seed and keep it moving. You understand? All you can do is plant the seed. The universe, God gives it increase. God gives it growth. Hmm? But when we lust for after results, we get mad when the shit don't grow like we want it to. We get upset with the seed. Mm -hmm. And thereby you get all these different offenses. But you need to die to the world. Die to your family and how they feel about you. Die to the pains and the pleasures that are here. Because as long as you are chasing pleasures and running from pains, you are a slave. The only thing you need to be alive to is the purpose that has been instilled for you and in you. Do you understand? Do you overstand? Do you understand what I am saying? Hmm? Move from pawn to purpose. There's a trinity here. 
But on one side is a thief and on the other side is a thief. The way, the truth and the life is directly in the middle. It's the middle path. It's the balance path. It's the just path. And the just shall walk by faith. Now, if you don't truly understand what faith is, then go check out some of my other guardios, but it's not what they taught you it was. That's right. Matter of fact, most of the stuff that you was taught is ass backwards. So you got to go back to the drawing board, but go back with an empty cup. You understand? Everything that the scriptures, any of the scriptures, whether it's the Bhagavad Gita, the Dead Sea Scrolls, whether it's the, the Book of the Dead, whether it's the Bible, whether it's the, the Quran, what, no matter what the scriptures is, they're all teaching and, and trying to elucidate the same thing, which is trying to show you how to move from being a pawn to being in power. Mm hmm. It's trying to tell you how to get out of the game by getting in it. Mm hmm. Because you're in there now, but you're being controlled by pleasure or pain. But once you want purpose, because you are purpose, you are life, you are light. You are God. Once you get in the game, you ever heard the game sleeping dogs? Hmm. Well, you are a sleeping God. Yes, your body's in the game. Your mind is in the game. But I done told you, you're not your body. You are not your mind. You are beyond and before all of those. Your mind is a mirror. You're not a mirror. Your mind is a mirror. And everything it sees is a reflection. You are not a reflection. You are the source of the reflection. You are not the mirror that is reflecting. That's your mind. You are before and be beyond the mind. Understand, people? Hmm? And so you got to get in the game. Your body's there. Your mind is there. But where are you? If you want to get out of the game, you got to get in it. Get in your spot. Get in purpose. Get on purpose and ride purpose into the fucking sunset. Mm hmm. Where are you? EA Sports say you got to get in the game, not as a pawn, but as the power as the purpose behind your every move. So from this day forth, I want you to, to really, really question yourself. You see, how the hell are we going to know thyself if we never question ourselves? You can't go on a date with somebody and never dig around into their likes and their dislikes and expect to know them. You got to ask some questions if you want to know some shit, right? So, I want you from this day forth for everything that you do. I want you to make a conscious decision to ask yourself, ask yourself, am I doing this to gain pleasure? Am I doing this to avoid pain or am I doing this for a purpose? That's what I want you to ask yourself. Ask yourself that. You know, take, take maybe over the next three days. You ain't got to do this for the rest of your life. Take the next three days and ask yourself, watch, pay attention to yourself. Observe yourself like you observe everybody else. Observe yourself and note, take note of everything that you do and the purpose that you're doing it for. Are you doing it to obtain pleasure? Are you doing it to avoid pain? Or are you doing it irregardless of the pain and the pleasure, but because of a purpose? If you plan on knowing yourself, you better start asking yourself some questions. You better start observing yourself. You better start seeing what motivates you to do whatever it is that you do. Because whatever motivates you, that is your God. That's right. Like I said, most people serve one God and not the other. Most people either A, run towards pleasure. That's all they do. All their whole entire life is trying to obtain pleasure. They go to school to obtain pleasure. They get a spouse to obtain pleasure. They do everything they do to obtain pleasure. They serve God and the universe and nature and everything for pleasure. Those are the pleasure people. Those people are ruled by pleasure. 
that is their God. Some people, pain is their, is their God. Everything that they do in their life is to avoid pain. They go to school to avoid the pain of being poor. They get a job to avoid the pain of not having any money. They get a spouse to avoid the pain of being alone. Everything they do is to avoid pain. Hmm? And therefore, pain is their God. But I don't want you to be of that number. You understand? I don't want you to be of that sort. I don't want you to be a slave to pain or pleasure. Either one, regardless of which one is a good God and which one is a bad God. I don't want you to be subject to any God. You understand? I want you to move according to purpose. That means don't factor in the pain that's involved. Don't factor in the pleasure that's involved. Don't chase every carrot that's dangled over your head, people. Because, you see, they dangle carrots over your head and lead your ass right into the ditch. And don't run from every crack of the whip on your ass, neither. That's right. Because you're just being more of a slave. You know, they say, cut off things that no longer serve you. Get away from anything that's not on your vibration. But I want you to understand when you begin to do that, if you're doing it simply to avoid the pain of fucking with low frequency beings, if you're only doing it to avoid the pain of living a low frequency life, then you're still a slave. You're still a slave, y'all. And so in this freedom movement, we speak, we speaking and teaching slave documents. Slave doctrine. Run from anything that hurts. Run from everything that's low frequency. And running you shall be. Running you shall. Hmm? Then they tell you, go towards everything that, that, that makes you feel good. Go toward, towards everything that gives you joy. Go towards anything that's conscious and high frequency. And that's what you do. Because there's pleasure in that. You get to feel like you're so much better than all of these unconscious folks. You get to feel like you're, you know, you're so high and holy and you're close to the most high and the God and God speaks to you and all of this wonderful shit. There's pleasure in it for you, but you're still a slave. So while you going back to nature, while you getting conscious and getting aware, I want you to be aware of these slave doctrines they out here teaching. Hmm? I say... I say it disregard the crack of the whip. That's what I say. I say die to pain. Die to the crack of the whip. I say disregard the carrot they dangling in front of your face. Die to that shit too. Good and delicious as it may be. Die to both of them. I say you only operate according to purpose. Whose purpose? Whose purpose you say? I say the purpose that is buried deep within you like a diamond in the rough. And if you haven't discovered that purpose, then all I can say is get to digging. Get to digging. That's right. If you want to get out, you better go in. You better go in and find your purpose. Find your diamond. Get your life. Like I said. Be careful. Be careful out here listening to everybody. And they're making you more of a slave than you was before. Hmm? But they stamping conscious and awake and aware and enlightened on that shit. So you think you awake, aware and enlightened. But how many of you know, sometimes they got shit in the package that is not labeled on the outside. You think you read the label and you know what's in there, right? No, sometimes they change the labels on your ass because they don't want you to know what they really put in there. And so too with this conscious information, we just eating them up. We just eating up all this information because the labels say conscious and aware and it say free. Freedom, but just like America, you could say freedom, but in reality, you're creating slavery. So too, in this so-called conscious community, they're telling you I'm making you free. So if you want to be free, run from the pain and run towards the pleasure. And I want you to know that that is the same system that's been around since eons. That's the trap. Mm -hmm. That's the God's. That's the sun and the moon. That's the two eyes on the outside of your head. If you can see the connections. And I'm telling you, don't worry about the pain involved. Don't worry about the pleasure involved. Don't be attracted to pleasure and don't be repulsed by the pain. 
That's that duality. That's that tree of good and evil. See, you run from the evil and you run towards the good and you are a fucking slave. But I'm telling you to eat from the tree of life, which is purpose. Because that's who and what you are. Eat from that tree. And that tree has sees no difference between the pleasure and the pain. It's only word about the purpose. You understand? That is the cross that they talk about. It's called purpose. That means there might be some pain involved, but I don't give a damn because I got a purpose. They may not accept me. They might reject me, but I don't give a damn because I'm moving according to purpose. I'm not moving according to pain. Mm -hmm. That also means that when the government comes offering you this or when somebody comes offering you this, you do not have to accept it just because you want it. That's right. You don't have to accept it just because you want it. You need to check with your purpose first. Check with purpose first. Ask purpose. Say purpose. You agree with this shit? I know we can get a lot of pleasure out of this. A lot of joy, a lot of happiness, high vibrational shit, but purpose. Let me ask you a question. Do you agree with this purpose? And if purpose say, no, this don't really have shit to do with me, then it just shouldn't have shit to do with you. You understand what I'm telling you? What does that mean, Crystal? That means sometimes you got to vibrate low. I know they told you that you should only vibrate high. But see, if you got a purpose, if you got a mandate to go into the darkness as the light, then you have to deal with darkness. I know they say you shouldn't be fucking with darkness, but let me tell you something, y'all. Light is not put in light. Light is put in darkness. And if you're saying you are light, then understand as a high vibrational light, you're going to have to fuck with some low vibrational darkness. That's right. So go on ahead and listen to them and get yourself away from the low frequency shit. Go ahead. Follow that acceptance. Follow the pleasure of being accepted. Follow the pleasure of being said that you're on the right path, that you're righteous and you're one of God's chosen. Keep following that pleasure. But as long as you're doing that, you're not going according to your purpose. Because if the universe said you're supposed to go in the darkness, then that means while you're cutting off all of the darkness and low vibration in your life, you are the one who's supposed to be transmuting that shit. And bringing it up to a high vibration. But because you cutting it off, you ain't fulfilling your purpose. So who are you serving exactly? Whose God are you serving? Let me ask you that question. Hmm? Who you really serving? Yeah, you serving pleasure. I know you want to be accepted. Who fucking raw for you? Who raw for you? But when you're tired of playing games, when you're tired of being in the game as a pawn of the game, then maybe you can get out the game by going in and you can be the controller of the game. How about that? Can you grasp what the fuck I just said? Yeah, how about that? Yeah, exactly. So that's why I'm telling y'all, be careful. Use your thinking skills. Critical thinking is so critical. Why you cutting off low vibrations? Vibration. See, your purpose could be one of those beings who go down into the depths of the hells to pull some of the saints out. But as long as you're avoiding hell, you are avoiding your purpose. Wow. Yeah, that's what I mean by living according to purpose. Some of y'all got a seed that has been planted inside of you from the great universe, a first fruit of the new type of human that is coming, a new type of thinking that is coming. Y'all got the first fruits planted in your heart from the great universe itself. But because because it doesn't go according to the old ways, according to the old tradition, according to old thinking, you don't want to be rejected. You don't want to be talked about. You don't want to accept the brunt of the change. And so you've let the seed die inside of your heart because pain and pleasure is your God and purpose is not. Because if purpose was your God, you would have watered that seed until it turned into a full-fledged flower, until it turned into a tree in which all of the birds of heaven, a.k.a. people in your life, can come and get some shade from that sun that's burning their ass up. Yeah. Who's your God? Hmm? Pleasure, pain, or purpose? Answer me that. Mm -hmm. 
You want to get mad at Kanye? Everybody want to kill Kanye because he said slavery is a choice. Meanwhile, motherfuckers is really killing black folks out here and ain't nobody got nothing to say about that. They going home making sandwiches. They on vacation with family right now. Ain't nobody trying to kill them. But Kanye ain't trying to teach you how you are the constructor of your reality, whether you want to perceive that or not. Vance want to talk about reality. No, you, you decide, boo. You decide. I know it feel good thinking that you don't have any choices here because it takes the responsibility out of your hands and put it into another. But the fact is, is you are God, whether you realize it or not. I'm going to say that again. You are God, whether you realize it or not. You might be a sleeping dog, a sleeping God, but you're God nevertheless. And while you are sleeping on the job. Life is continuing on without you and you are being moved from one side to the other like a ship without an anchor. And slavery is a choice because all you got to do is wake up and get in the game. That's all you got to do. But you refuse. You refuse because you want to be accepted because you don't want to be talked about. You don't want them to make videos about you. Yeah, because you're scared. And for you, who are still being controlled by pain and by pleasure, there's only one way. There's one way in this motherfucker, and there's one way out, and they call him death. Death. That's what I said. That's right, death. To he who seeks to save his life, he will lose it. And to he who loses his life for my sake, who is my? Who says that? For my sake. My as in purpose. As in the way, the truth, and the life. He who loses his life for my sake will find it. That's right. Death. One way in his way and one way out. You got to die to the pains of this world. As fleeting and temporary. You got to die to the pleasures of this world. As fleeting and temporary. But you come alive to purpose. Because see purpose. Who is you? Who is life? Who is light? Is eternal. Hmm? So store up for yourself treasures in heaven. That is purpose. Can't nobody give you your purpose. Can't nobody tell you your purpose. They may help guide you to your purpose. They may help you find your purpose, but they can't give it to you or find it for you because it is hidden within you, just like the third eye. They can poke out the two on the front, but they can't poke the one out on the inside. They can get rid of your sight, but they can never get rid of your vision. They can give you pain and pleasure, but they can never give you purpose. Because that's something that's on the inside. You understand? They could shoot a rocket up into the, in the sun and blow that bitch out the sky and the moon too. But they can't fuck with the black hole sun. No, they cannot. And I'm telling you, whatever you identify with, that is what you become. You are the great I am. And whatever you put behind the I am is what the fuck you is. I am whatever. Do you understand? So I'm telling you to identify with that portion of yourself, which is immortal and eternal and indestructible purpose. But if you're not in identification with that portion of yourself, then you are a slave. You are a slave to pain and you are a slave to pleasure. You see, that's like the look, look at this picture here. This picture I have before you is the layout of everything. That's why I'm trying to tell y'all. This is the layout of every single thing. This is the layout of your brain. You see, the man over there is the left brain. The woman over there is the right brain. And Cayenne is, is, is exemplifying and representing and signifying your third eye. The joining of the two, the rainbow bridge between the two opposing ends. You see, he's the chain that is tying the Piscean fish going in opposite directions together. Hmm? This is also the layout of the Bible. Over here, you see the man, that's Moses, Old Testament. You see St. Paul over here, that's New Testament. But right in the middle, you see Jesus. The four Gospels. Mm-hmm. 
That's right. You see the layout of your body right here. If you are what we call female in this realm, then that means your upper half is positive. That's the man over there. Your bottom half is negative. It receives. Your vagina is designed to receive, but your breasts give. You understand? Your bottom is positive. Your, your, excuse me, your bottom is negative. Your top is positive. But right in the center, the heart of the matter is just and balanced. It's positive and negative together. They cancel out in the middle. This is what everything is trying to teach you. Even with the Freemasons, you got the, 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 the pillar of severity. Joaquin, the pillar of beauty and mercy. Boaz, or I might have them backwards, but it's Joaquin and Boaz. But you got that middle pillar that leads to the third eye or the first eye, rather. Even with law, you got the law of the land. Common law. You got the law of the sea. Admiralty law. But then you got that middle law. Called natural law. That is above and beyond and before all other laws. And in the same way your purpose is above, beyond and before all pleasures and all temporal pains. Of this realm. And so it would behoove you if you are one who is claiming wisdom, one who is claiming enlightenment to stop living according to to the attainment of pleasure and acceptance and joy and peace and, and all of these wonderful positive affirmations. It would also behoove you not to live according to avoiding pain and low frequency and suffering and death. But it would, it would, it would do you well to do like they say, get your life, get some purpose, get some life, get some light in your life. And that should be the only God that you follow. That should be the only mandate that you follow, irregardless of what God pain says or irregardless of what God pleasure says. If God purpose don't say move, you ought not be moving. If God purpose don't say stand, you ought not be standing. If God purpose don't say shut up, you ought not be shutting up. Hmm? Who is your God? Who is your God? Don't get mad because he say slavery is a choice. If you choose to believe that slavery is a choice, that's your choice. You still got a choice. Everything's a choice. You, you do not exist without choice. Hmm? Everything's a choice. That's how you created this shit. Everything. And if you choose not to choose, you're still choosing. Yes, that's right. If you choose not to choose, you're still choosing. Grasp what I just said now. Your choice not to choose is a choice. That's all you got here is choice. So, yes, slavery is a choice. You're either a pawn or you on purpose or you in power. Which one are you in? Hmm? Which one are you in? Move from being a pawn to being in power. Stop being a slave to pain and to pleasure. You shouldn't care what they think about you. You couldn't, shouldn't care what they say. You see, they may, but they may say that, that this is used for that. And that's good for them. But what do you use it for is the question. You see, some people use mayonnaise jars for mayonnaise. Some people use it as a pencil holder. <laughs> Who's right here? The people who put mayonnaise in it or the people who put pencils in it? Hmm? Y'all know y'all got that grandma that after she finished with the old, you remember them old mayonnaise jars that was made out of real ass a glass? We'll rinse that, we'll wash it out real good and use that shit as a pencil holder or a paper holder or something else like that. How many of you use your butter containers as Tupperware? Hmm? Who's right? The person who said it's supposed to be for butter or the person who said it's for leftovers? The point is, is you need to be free in your thinking if you're free nowhere else, because that's where they get you. Wherever the mind goes, the man will follow. I'm going to say that again. Wherever the mind goes, the man will follow. And so they control your mind by utilizing pleasure as a God and pain as a God for you. You are unawares. Sleep at the wheel. Wherever pain go, you run the opposite way. Whenever pleasure come, you run right towards that shit. 
not even realizing that this is this this is the steering wheel. This is the A and B button on the remote control that they got on your ass. You understand? They are holding the remote control to you in their hands. Who are they, Crystal? Whoever the hell they are in your life, you should know who they are. Some of them is your mama and your daddy still. You 40 years old, but your mama and your daddy still got the control to your life. Some of y'all, your children got the control to your life. That's right. They either, they either, uh, uh, um, they'll reject you and they'll make you feel like shit. So you over at the store buying shit that you don't have money to buy in order so they can, so they can love you and accept you 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 understand either that or 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 if you don't talk to them in a certain way they're gonna clean up their room all fucked up like and agitate you and everything else so they've learned how to control you by using pleasure and pain and i'm telling you as a parent you should not be you should not be trying to be your children's friend that's chasing that pleasure and acceptance from your children. And you shouldn't be worried about the pain, whether they in the back room pouting or not, what they tell their friends about you. You shouldn't be worried about neither one of those, but you should be operating according to purpose because you have a mandate to rear and raise some cheering. And that is your purpose. And regardless of whether the pain or the pleasure in it, you need to stay in your lane. And your lane is purpose. Your purpose is to teach them what they need to know in order to live this life. Do you understand? They don't have to be your friend. That's right. They could either be your friend or your enemy. It matters to you not. But what matters is that you fulfill your purpose as a parent. Hmm? Get your life. Get your life, God damn it. That's right. Get your life. Sometimes you need to hear shit rough like this so you can really grasp what's being said to you because your life, your life is not present. Yeah, that's what they call a living death. You, you, you alive, so-called, but you dead. You dead. You're not alive on the inside. See, your reasoning principle is not alive. That's right. You don't reason. You go according to pleasure and pain. You see, reasoning is something above and above pleasure and pain. That's right. That requires critical thinking. And that's some shit we just don't have these days. That's right. Like common sense ain't quite that common anymore. Mm -hmm. Use your critical thinking skills, people. Move in purpose, not in pain, not in pleasure, but move according to purpose. And you will find that a lot of the problems that so-called problems that you have in your life will fall off. If you is being in slavery to your children, you slave by choice. That's right. You a slave by choice because, see, the choice resides in who is your God. Don't nobody can't decide that for you. You decide whose mandates you listen to. You decide who you serve. Do you serve pleasure? Do you serve pain or do you serve purpose? And that's your choice. You could be a slave to either three of them. But I, I, I implore you to be a slave to purpose because you are purpose. And so if you are a slave to yourself, then that makes you the slave and the master. You are the all in all. You are the end all to be all. Hmm? Grasp what I'm saying. Get your life. It's you, a boy ass. Peace. She was says, correct. I am my daughter's mother, not her friend. Exactly. And, and, and again, people, I'm not saying that it, it, it is um, that you don't have to be friends with your children, because it is very important for us to have a, a, re a open relationship where we can speak to our children as with a friend, where they're not afraid to come and talk to us about life's issues. You know, that's a fact. That's a problem in the black community where the child cannot come talk to mama or daddy about visceral issues about sex and 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 just things like that. So that's I'm not saying don't be friends with your your children, but what I'm saying is when the friendship gets in the way of purpose who do you serve that's what i'm saying who do you serve mm -hmm. yeah facts new old soul yeah wet witch wednesday i checked out y'all check out wet witch wednesday at, at the alchemy temple google that the alchemy temple with jamila and new old soul Wet Witch Wednesday was on fire. Terrence giving peace, peace. Katovia, Kevin Brown, peace. Exactly, Alicia. Light follows thought. Exactly. Kevin Brown, peace. 
going beyond the law. Exactly, Kevin, going beyond gender, going beyond law, going beyond life and death, good and bad. You understand? Going beyond light and darkness. Go beyond that. You see, this is why you see that new movie that come out. It's not new. It's old. Actually, it's called The Fifty Shades of Grey. You see, everything has a mystical and mythical interpretation for those who have eyes to see. The Fifty Shades, is that what it's called? Yeah, Fifty Shades of Grey. With the dude Christian, he, uh, he, he's a sadomasochist or whatever. He take this woman down wherever he take her. I ain't never even seen the movie, but according to what they say is, uh, uh, they, they, they find pleasure in pain. This is what he do. He gets pleasure out of pain. What does that mean? That means he joined the positive and the negative. And now pain is not pain anymore. Pain is really pleasure for him. And pleasure ain't pleasure anymore. Pleasure is really pain. And so when you join the opposites, you get 50 shades of gray. Do you understand? When you put black and white together, you can have 50 shades of gray. And so, see, Christian, see, he died to the idea of there being a pleasure and a pain. He realized that he died to the idea of there being a such thing as life and death. He realized that death is the beginning of a new life and life is the beginning of your death. That's right. Every baby that's born is uh, is at the very beginning of his death because it's a downward fucking spiral. Do you understand? And everybody that dies is at the beginning of a brand new life, whether you realize it or not. And so life and death are not twins. They are exactly the same person. That's right. They're not twins that look alike. They are the same exact person. Mm -hmm. And so in the same way, you can understand <clears throat> You can understand that like Christian in the Fifty Shades of Grey, that pain and pleasure like life and death, like good and bad or good and evil are exactly the same thing once you change your and tweak your perspective just a little. So I implore you to marry your opposites and that way you get 50 shades of gray. Marry your blue and your red and you get 50 shades of purple. Do you understand what I'm telling you? You get more life. Who wants to watch a black and white movie? We like shit in color, right? So marry your opposites so you can have light, which is color. Hmm? Your positive and your negative. Hmm? Your pleasure and your pain. And so therefore, pain becomes pleasure to you and pleasure becomes pain. That means that you are willing to go into hell's fire for a purpose. That you are dead to the fact that it is hell's fire. You don't even feel the fucking flames because you're dead to the flames. Why? Because you are alive to your purpose. You don't feel that shit. Have you ever seen somebody doing something that, that, that you just couldn't understand how the hell they was dealing with it? Have you seen people in relationships that you would never find yourself in and you don't know how she's staying in that relationship? Now, that's a perverted analogy. It is a perverted example, but it is an example to show you that sometimes when people got a purpose, they can run right in the fires, right in the flames of hell and never feel the burn. Mm hmm. Why? Because they're dead to the flames of hell just as much as they're dead to the clouds of heaven. But they are alive to the purpose that has been dropped in their heart like a seed. Mm -hmm. And so when you live according to purpose, you can walk on glass. You can walk on wire, water. You can walk through the coals. You ever seen them people on TV? They walk on hot coals and don't even feel that shit. They walk over a whole damn runway of glass and never get cut. How does that happen? Hmm. I want you to understand that it's trying to show you a principle of something because when you walk according to purpose, purpose is indestructible. Purpose was here before any of the foundations was laid. Everything that in this manifestation is designed according to purpose and without purpose, nothing was made. That's what I, that's what I, without purpose, nothing that was made would have been made. Everything, the foundation of all things here is purpose. I tell y'all, there is nothing here without purpose. Death has a purpose. Pain has a purpose. All that negative shit you're trying to cut yourself off from has a purpose. But the purpose is, is you have a purpose. You yourself have a purpose. And when you walk according to that purpose, you got to discover it first. That's the whole point of self-discovery, knowing thyself. 
That's the shit you're trying to discover, your purpose. What is my purpose? What you're really asking is, who am I? Who am I? And see, when you find your purpose, you find yourself. But see, the problem is, is a lot of us, we find our purpose, we find ourselves, but then we turned our backs on ourselves. We turn our back on our purpose. Why? Because our family don't, don't agree with the purpose. Our family don't see our vision. Mm -hmm. Society don't see my vision. Pastor don't see my vision. My children are not standing behind me in my vision. Or... We say some shit like, well, there's no money in that. I see my purpose, but I can't get paid for that. There's no money in that. There's no security in that. See, I got to walk by faith too much. I'm not really that good in that faith shit. I like to see the steps before I jump on them, you see. So we turn our back on our purpose because it requires you to walk by faith. It requires you not to see what's coming around the corner, you see, because grace is only good for today. So you don't know about tomorrow, nor do you know about yesterday. You're left stuck with just this present moment. I want you to know that the past is unimportant and so is the future. You see, that's them two thieves that hung on the side of Jesus. That's like that man and that woman that's on the side of Kanye here. The past and the future, they don't really exist. But when you bring the past and the future together, when you join your positive and your negative, you get the present moment. You get right now. Understand that your power and your purpose is not in the past, nor is it in the future. It is in right now. While you waiting on your future to jump into your purpose, I want you to know that there is no purpose in the future. There is no purpose in the past. Purpose only exists in the now. Your grace is only sufficient for today. That's right. For today, why worry about tomorrow? Hmm? You have enough troubles today to worry about. Ain't that true? Ain't, ain't that true? Huh? Grace is not in tomorrow. It's not in the past. Grace is in today. Your purpose is not in yesterday. Your purpose is not yet to come. Your purpose is here right now. All you got to do is be still and listen. But because everybody told you to think more, to search more, to see more, to do more, you ain't being still. So therefore, you still don't know who is God. Be still and know that I am God, I am the great I am. Hmm? Be still and know thyself. Because when you know thyself, you can truly be said to have known God. And you have met God as if meeting a friend. And you have spoke with God face to face. Yeah. Understand. Check these comments. And she would say, as family discussion, trained and untrained children, it's work. Yes, it's work. You got to labor for that rest, the scriptures say. You got to labor for that rest. Labor for the rest. That's right. If you want to get out, you got to go in. If you want to get out the game, you better get in the game. Hmm? If you want to get out, you better get in. That's right. Labor for that rest, my people. Check God is so beautiful, beloved. Peace. Betty says, purpose is indestructible. Exactly, Betty. Betty, purpose is indestructible. If you don't find out your purpose this life, you'll have to find that bitch next life. And you will keep being reincarnated because this is a vehicle. You will be reincarnated until you discover the purpose that has been buried within you. It's indestructible. It's like a light. You can you can dim it, but you can never snuff it out. See, that's why the Olympians, you see the vesica Pisces in the Olympian symbol. They got that torch that never goes out. They just pass it from one to the other. That's how you are in your different lives. You are passing your purpose from the last ego you inhabited to the new ego you inhabited. And once you uh, discover that purpose and let your little light shine like they taught your ass in church, then and only then... Will you not be subjected to be reincarnated? You won't have to get in the game anymore. That's right. You don't have to play the game anymore. You can escape the game. Escape the matrix. Hmm? 
Yes, you can. Purpose is indestructible. Get your some. Get your life. Get your purpose. Because they're one and the same. And that's what you need to be moving by. Every decision that you make in life. Everything you eat. Everything you watch. Everywhere you go. Everything you listen to. Should be according to purpose. Because purpose is the most high God. I don't care what they told you. They got all kinds of names for the most high God. And all kinds of attributes. But if we just going to be real practical about it. Because see I'm a practical nurse. I like to be practical about things. If we're going to be real practical. Then we can practically say that the most high God is purpose and therefore if you are operating according to anything but the most high then you my friend are in trouble so you could call me blasphemous all you want you can say I got a demon all you want you can say I am going against God all you want and I forgive you (laughs) cuz you know not what you do you are lost it is, it is for those who are of a higher intellect, who are, it is for those who have a bird's eye view, a little bit of an elevated view, to be patient with those who are still on the lower rungs of the latter. I hold no fault against anyone. But at the same time, I'm not going to let your limiting ass beliefs, your limiting ass views of life stop me from my purpose. I serve the true and living God resident within me, dwelling within me. Hmm? And I implore you all to do the same. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Brown says, staying on the wheel of life. Exactly, Kevin. That's how you stay on. That's why the Freemason floor is checker, because it's it's all about duality. The only way you get out is by uniting the two. It's by the male and the female coming together, the light and the dark, the life and the death, the good and the bad coming together to create, create just life. That's all it is, is life. Whether you see it as good or bad, it doesn't matter. It's life. It's going according to a purpose. Everything that dies is going according to purpose. You understand? Nothing here is without purpose. And you can truly be said to be in heaven when you can see the purpose in all things. The negative and the positive. The good and the bad. You understand? All things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to... Who know the rest of that? Who know the rest of that verse, huh? All things work together for good to those who are called... Who, who love God and are called according to... To purpose. Grasp. Like Silas the wise says. This is a deep thing. And if you're not going according to purpose. Then don't expect the rest of that scripture to work for you. See we want to take half of the scripture. But not the other half. It says all things work together for good. It don't say that all things are good. It don't say that all days are good. It says At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, it's all working together for good. Now, then it tells us for who? To them who love God. Got that. Check. I love the universe. I love God. I love spirit. I love all manifestation. I love everything that ever was. To those who love God. And here's the second part. And are called according to his purpose. Now, if you're not called according to purpose, (laughs) and if you don't love everything that truly ever was and ever will be, then you cannot expect for everything to work (laughs) for your good. (laughs) Let me repeat that. If you, if you do not love God, and we should not have to explain who God is at this stage in the game. If you don't know who God is, go back and check some of the other God heals. If you do not love God, and if you are not called according to not pain and not pleasure, but if you are not called according to purpose, then do not expect all things to work out for your good. That's right. You need to get on the right side of life. You understand? The right side. (laughs) You're welcome, Corey Reeves. Peace, peace. Terrence. Cosmo Light, peace, Cosmos. Cosmos be doing videos, y'all. Catch, catch Cosmos Light. He do a lot of good videos with good information, good thought-provoking shit. Check him out, bro. Yeah. Rajit Lutichar. 
This is Todd. 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 Got me saying this name. Todd. Peace, Todd. Yeah. His purpose. Exactly, Betty. Carolyn. Peace, Miss Carolyn. Yeah, that's right, Deidre. You can't get any greater than the all. And doesn't it tell you in your scripture that that's the whole purpose of this shit? So God could be in, can be the all in all. So God can be the all in all. Okay? And so that's what we need to be moving towards. Being moving towards from being a pawn to being in power. This is the whole purpose of, uh, 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 of all of the scriptures. That's the script. That's the script because that's what you do for all eternity. Any scripture that you get will tell you the script of eternity, which is to continuously expand, to move from a lower state to a higher state. That's what we're going to be doing for all eternity. You know what they say? They say that for all eternity in heaven, you praise and worship God. You just didn't know that praise means to raise, to expand. <laughs> and you didn't know that you were God. So you will be expanding and raising or praising yourself for all eternity. So that's why the script is eternal. The script will never die because the script explains to you the script of your eternity. Your purpose is to expand and to continue to grow on and on and on forever and ever and ever. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, so that's what the script going to show you. That's what the script teaches you, how to level up, how to upgrade, not downgrade. You see, you go from 10th to 11th grade. You get one degree and you go to another degree. You don't downgrade, you upgrade for all of eternity. So see, Jesus was trying to teach you how to upgrade you. Didn't Beyonce make a song about that? Bay being house, on say or once, once house, house once, once upon a fucking time, you was upgrading yourself, but somehow you got stopped in your tracks. You got confused. You started following the blind and the blind led your ass in a ditch. But now has come the age of salvation. Now has come your year of jubilee, your year of redemption, where you pull yourself up out of the ditch by your bootstraps. Yes, you do. And you reclaim your life. You reclaim your body and you reclaim, most importantly, your mind. That's right. And you stop letting them put anything in your mirror for you to reflect on. You only reflect on things that attend to your purpose. You only move uh, in places that attend to your purpose. You only eat foods that attend to your purpose. That is your true will that Alistair Crowley, that Alistair Crowley talked about. He said, what did he say? We say he's a devil worshiper. That doesn't he always put that triangle that signifies the all-seeing eye, that signifies purpose? See, they called him a devil, but he filled out his purpose, didn't he? For those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, I want you to know something else, people. See, when you get on these lines of thinking, you start looking at everything in so-called his story. And you start put, p uh, picking apart his story. And you see prominent figures such as uh, 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 Hitler. And uh, even prominent figures such as get Jim Crow and shit like that. And you realize, <laughs> you realize that there's a purpose in all things. Purpose, my friend. And you see, when you get like that, you're unstoppable. You are unstoppable. When you move according to purpose, the universe will honor that shit. See, you wonder how Hitler got so far. See, the universe is no respecter of persons. I'm going to say that again. The universe is no respecter of persons. What does that mean? The universe could give a damn about your ego. It don't care what day you was born, who your mom and daddy is, what class you're in, what race you're in. It don't care about none of that shit. What it wants to know is who is your God. And if your God is purpose, regardless of what that purpose may be, the universe will sanction and bless it. I'm going to say that again. The universe will sanction and blessed. If you don't believe me, ask Hitler. 
You wonder how Hitler got along so far. You wonder how so-called evil folks are blessed in this world. It makes you believe that either justice is blind, God has got to be blind or something, but it's not. It's see, God blesses purpose. Mm -hmm. All things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. And all you got to do is get you some. Hmm? Get you some. And you'll become undestructible. See, it's the Iron Man suit. You understand? Get you some purpose in your life. And nothing, nothing, and I mean nothing in heaven nor in hell will stop you because heaven and hell are created realms. I'm going to say that again. Get you some purpose. Nothing in heaven or hell will be able to stop you because heaven and hell are created realms. And they are created off of and by purpose. So if you operating according to purpose, you're operating according to the foundation of all things. And the foundation is under all things. Ain't that what a foundation is? A foundation of a house is that which is under the house, but it's holding the house up, right? Well, see, when you identify with the foundation, with the purpose of everything, then you understand everything because you stand under everything. And isn't love understanding? And isn't God love? Hmm? Is not love understanding? And is not God love? So you need to identify with the foundation of everything because it is the foundation that stands under all things. That's how you come to understanding. Hmm? Yeah. And in this realm, it's not the sun and the moon that really manifest shit. See, they just project shit. They don't create it. They project it. Understand that it's the amen, the ah moon, ra, the black hole sun that manifest. Hmm? And I want you to understand that it is not the two eyes on the outside of your head that determines what you see. But it is rather the one on the inside. Because we judge the world not as it is, but as we are. We judge people not as they are, but as we are. So it's the one eye on the inside that truly manifests your world. Just like it is the black hole sun that manifests this reality. While you sun gazing and sun worshiping and shit. Mm -hmm. The hidden one. And in the same way, it's not pleasure and it is not pain that should be controlling your life, but it should be the hidden one purpose. That's right. They can't see your purpose. Do you understand? They can't see your purpose like they can't see your third eye, like they can't see the third sun, the black hole sun, our moon rod. They can't see your purpose. They can't see your vision. Don't expect them to. Don't expect them to. That is unrealistic expectations. You understand? We each have our own individual personal purpose, our own individual personal Jesus, our own individual personal black hole son. That's right. Which is hidden and cannot be seen. Don't expect them to. And be careful who you tell your vision to. That's right. Be careful who you tell your vision to. Because you see, secrets is like secretions. Some of us like it juicy. I like secretions. And so therefore, I like secrets. That's right. Your vision ain't for everybody. Your vision is not for everybody. Keep that a secret. You keep the pathway to your vision juicy when you keep a secret. <laughs> you understand? If that makes any sense. If y'all can grasp what I'm trying to say without being vulgar, understand that there, there's a womb where God has planted a seed. And it is not for you to open your womb to everybody. Don't everybody need to see the inward parts. Don't everybody need to see your, your womb where the seed has been laid. Can't everybody get into your cave? Your vesica Pisces to see your vision. You see? And when you keep secrets, it keep the it keep the pathway to the vision, to the seed, very juicy. Now you